डॉक्टर सुप्रिया वी आर लाइक प्लीज गो एंड सुप्रिया यू म्यूटेड मैं ऑडिबल सर यस प्लीज गो एंड Greetings everyone I am Dr Supriya Tiwari SR currently working at Ramnagara District Hospital and uh, being a member of social media subcommittee at KCIPM I feel truly happy to welcome you all uh, on season 2 of KCIPM PATH webinar um today's topic is uh, maternal vascular malperfusion lesions of placenta and this is part 2 of the uh, uh, series placental pathology before i go on to introduce our speaker for today who honestly don't need any introduction i have a few reminder for our audiences please uh, set your resolution to 720 pixel for better viewing experience and uh, uh, we encourage you to participate actively through the session if you have any questions put them down in the chat box below so we'll take them up in the end and it is my true honor to um, introduce none other than dr sunil jaiman sir uh, who is a stalwart in the field of placental pathology sir has done his uh, mbbs from assam medical college and internship from saptajang uh, new delhi uh, he has done his md pathology from uh, manipal uh, kmc manipal karnataka and holds a diplomat ship from royal college of pathology uk he has done commendable work in the field of placental pathology but one of the accomplishment that stands out is the discovery of uh, tumor corangia endothelioma for which sir provided the nomenclature as well um sir has published uh, many uh, journals both international and national and currently holds a uh, editorial position in uh, indian journal of pathology and microbiology Uh, his research area includes um, his research interest includes development of human placenta uh, disorder of placental villus uh, uh, malformations uh, fetal congenital anomalies um, and uh, uh, he has contribution to many uh, societies uh, related to uh, placental pathology so uh, we are uh, very excited and looking forward to another encompassing session on placental pathology we humbly welcome you here over to you sir uh, thank you very much dr supriya uh, thank you for your kind introduction uh, thank you dr aditya thanks to KCIAPM for giving me this opportunity. It's a great honor, and I I look forward to to these sessions. And I hope I can enrich the audience with whatever little knowledge I have. Uh, today's session is on maternal vascular malperfusion lesions of placenta. These are very very important lesions, and I'm trying to I will try to just show you the histology, uh, only the pictures, so that. uh all the postgraduates who are here can uh, discern what is pathology and what is not uh, uh pathology in placenta placental lesions are very difficult to diagnose uh, most of the times we think it's very easy but it is not easy and uh, you may imagine that national institute of health united states has an entire budget and an entire a uh, uh, project called human placenta project and the perinatology research branch on uh, where i'm working is uh, an intramural branch of nichd which is dedicated purely to placenta and placental research so you can imagine the importance of this organ and today mvm or maternal vascular malperfusion lesions which i'm going to share with you is just a tip of the iceberg I'll share my screen now. I hope it's visible to everybody. Can you see my screen? It's coming up, sir. Oh. Yes, it's visible now, sir. Great. Thank you. So, MVM lesions. I will show you first a few gross lesions which are very obvious. uh many of these mvm lesions 
I will use MVM because that's a standard form for maternal vascular malperfusion and also to save time. Uh, few gross lesions, I will show you lesions, uh, infarctions, infarction hematoma, distal villus hyperplasia, how increases it shall not slurk, what is villus agglutination, persistent, what is persistent endovascular trophoblast, what are, what, how does persistent muscularization of basal plate arteries or also known as non-transformed spiral arteries look like, uh, spiral artery fibrinoid necrosis, spiral artery thrombosis and atherosis. Uh, I want to draw your attention that all the obstetric lesions, uh, generally known as the great obstetrical syndromes like preeclampsia, small for gestational age, fetal death, abrupt your placenta, preterm labor, preterm prom, all of them show lesions uh, of placenta and placental vascular dysfunction in some form or the other. Preeclampsia would show predominantly MVM lesions, small for gestational age may show various other lesions apart from preeclampsia, it may show a lot of chronic villitis, uh, chronic inflammatory lesions, fetal death shows a spectrum of disorders. Abrupt show placenta is perhaps the prototypical lesion for, uh, for MVM. All the, if one is diligent, all MVM lesions can be seen in one particular, in any one case of abrupt show placenta, if one is diligent and lucky enough. Preterm labor, preterm prom, predominantly show acute inflammatory lesions of the placenta. But by and large, there is vascular dysfunction of pregnancy in all the great obstetrical syndromes. Uh, so, uh, here what you're seeing is the subchorionic fibrin uh, plaque and basal infarction. Here, this is subchorionic fibrin plaque. We have to remember that subchorionic fibrin plaque in these small amounts is not pathological. This is, can be quite, this is, can be seen in, in term placentas. It becomes pathological only when there is substantial amount of subchorionic uh, hemorrhage. So this, this amount is, is not significant and it is not part of the MVM lesions. But basal infarct is. This is the basal plate infarct. You, uh, this is a gross appearance of infarction. On the left side, you can see a normal cut section of the placenta, how spongy it looks. Here, what you're seeing is the chorionic plate. This is the infarction. All this washed out appearance is infarction and in the center there is uh, hematoma. It's, a, it's like an infarction hematoma. This is a, a, another gross lesion of infarction hematoma. What you are seeing here is subchorionic hemorrhage. Subchorionic hemorrhage in this amount is pathological because sometimes it goes down right up to the basal plate and when it's involving more than 30 percent of the placenta, it's called bruise mole or or massive subchorionic fibrin hemorrhage which can go down up to the basal plate and can cause fetal death. Uh, this is a basal hemorrhage. This is the same case where there was subchorionic hemorrhage and it, the hemorrhage extended up to the basal plate. This is basal hemorrhage here. This entire thing is basal hemorrhage. Actually, there is a little bit of basal infarction also here, which you can see a little bit of grayish white areas. This is a fixed placenta where you can see infarction hematoma out the outside the is the uh, is the infarction and in the center is the hematoma uh, i want to draw your attention that it's very it to in order to understand placental pathology we should divide the placenta into vascular lesions and the villus lesions vascular lesions are all the uh, major vessels of the placenta like the basal plate spiral arteries uh, uh, and uh, other smaller vessels and villus lesions are the ones in the or lesions of MVM in which are predominantly present in the villus tree. It doesn't mean that these are mutually exclusive. Uh, most many times you would find both these lesions in one particular placenta. So what are these vascular lesions? These are persistent muscularization of the basal plate arteries, mural hypertrophy of the decidua parietalis arterioles atherosis of the placental vessels, spiral artery fibrinoid necrosis, spiral artery thrombosis, and persistent endovascular trophoblast. I once again want to draw your attention that uh, all these vascular lesions which can be present in the basal plate of the placenta 
as well as the membranes. Membranes also have these uh, vessels. These are not these are not as big vessels as we see in the basal plate. There are tiny vessels, but they have similar lesions, and I will show you subsequently. So this is the normal villus tree. You can see the normal chorionic plate. You can see the decidua basalis, and you can see the villus tree. So all these villi, which extend from the subchorionic region up to the basal plate. So when we have lesions in the villa, vill, in the in the villi, we say we say these are villus lesions. The white area intervening is is the maternal space. This has maternal blood. So uh, th this is like uh, like you can say in the in the liver, the lacunate, where we have the blood, uh, the sinusoids where there are blood. So the whitish area which you see throughout the placenta is the is the intervillous space which has maternal blood. Uh, the villus lesions would be present in all these and the basal plate lesions uh, which where which in part of the MVM region. They are part of fetal vascular malperfusion lesions, which we will uh, discuss discuss at an appropriate town time. Uh, one important thing I want to to highlight is that most of the placental dysfunction, most of the lesions are because of the absence of vasculosensitial membranes. We have heard of uh, these membranes in the lung. We have heard of these membranes in the uh, in the brain. So we have very similar membranes where there is these are the blood vessels, and then you can see the syncytial trophoblast when there is complete apposition of the syncytium with the vascular endothelium this is where all the gaseous exchange happens this is a term placenta and you can see beautiful vascular syncytial membranes as if the capillaries are bursting and the blood is going to come out from here this is where all the gaseous exchange occurs so these are vascular syncytial membranes in in many of these placental lesions the vascular syncytial membranes are are absent or diminished and that's where the pathology occurs. There's no nutrition exchange, so there could be fetal growth system, fetal death, uh, etc. Uh, these are spiral arteries. These are basal spiral arteries. You can see these empty spaces. These are large vascular lumen without muscular tunica media. These are transformed spiral arteries. So how does persistent muscularization of the basal plate or non-transformed vessels look? This is a cartoon to show you uh, how that how it's it transforms these are transformed spiral arteries dilated spiral arteries this is the basal artery this is the radial artery these are the blue here are these undilated spiral arteries these are non-transformed spiral arteries and when this this lesion progresses it becomes atherosis where the lumen is occluded by 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 atherosis so this is a normal transformed spiral artery, large vascular lumina, and this is in the basal plate, persistent muscularization of spiral arteries or spiral arteries with thick mus tunica uh, media. Uh, uh, persistent, uh, this is another view of persistent muscularization of spiral arteries. Persistent spiral uh, can also be present like this. You can see there are two vessels which are transformed, but there is one vessel where there is a lot of tunica media and the lumen is occluded. This is not thrombus because you can clearly see the endothelial cells. If you do a endothelial cell marker, these, uh, these cells would light up. So this is the muscularized spiral artery. Uh, mural hypertrophy is what is is a similar lesion present in the membranes. So these are uh, hypertrophic uh, spiral arteries which are which are in the membrane. So muscularized decida parietalis arterioles. You can see these three arterioles which are thick. In a term placenta, this is distinctly abnormal. You, we don't find such, we should not find these thick uh, muscularized vessels. Uh, fibrinoid necrosis and acute atherosis are two other lesions of the of the uh, spiral arteries. And this is uh, again, to sh to so that there is a clear comparison. You can see this is a normal spiral artery at one end. And on the right hand side, you can see fibrinoid necrosis of the spiral artery. This is the fibrinoid necrosis. And you can see the, the lumen. This is pathological. You should, uh, you should not find these lesions in a normal term placenta. Uh, 
Uh, spiral artery atherosis is looks like this. This is a classic picture. Not every time you may find that. Sometimes you, because we take serial sections, we, we may not find this classic picture, but always be careful. Whenever you find these uh, uh, fibrinoid necrosis, look for uh, these, these foamy macrophages. You can see these foamy macrophages. This is very similar to the atherosis which we see in the heart, I'll show you later on. Spiral, this is spiral artery atherosis. Uh, this is another view of spiral artery atherosis. You can see these beautiful foamy macrophages. This is another picture just to drive home the message that fibrinoid necrosis, atherosis, which is lipid laden macrophages. And, and in order to, to, to highlight this, we can do a cytokeratin stain, non non-transformed spiral arteries uh, or atherosis. spiral arteries with atherosis do not have uh, uh, cytokeratin positive trophoblasts in the mus in the mus in the wall of the blood vessels you can see this, the cytokeratin positive or the trophoblasts present all around but they are not present in the uh, in the va vascular lumen these trophoblasts are the ones which actually transform the spiral arteries. In atherosis, in MVM lesions, these trophoblasts are not present. Or if they are present, they are present in diminished quantities. So you can see cytokeratin all around, but they are not present in these atherotic vessels. Uh, you, you can also do a CD68 and you can find these foamy macrophages. This, they light up beautifully. So again, goes on to prove that these are this is actually a truly atherotic lesion. Uh, fibrinoid necrosis and atherosis of vessel. I showed you the basal plate. Now I'm showing you the membranes. You can see the chorion. You can see the amnion. You can see the chorion, and you can see this is these are this is the membranes here. The uh, the vessels in the trophoblast in the decidua parietalis. These are all atherotic uh, vessels. This is the amnion, this is the chorion, this is the trophoblast layer, this is the decida parietalis, and you can see fibrinoid necrosis as well as atherosis and lipid-laden macrophages. This is atherosis of the membranes. Uh, it, it, uh, it has, uh, my experience has been that it has a geographic variation because uh, uh, we did a study with a Caucasian population. I have of course, worked in India for six years at Fernandez Hospital, and I found that atherosis of the membranes is quite common in Indian in Indian in Indian population, and in in uh, United States in uh, Michigan, I find this lesion quite common in African Americans. So perhaps it is a geographic dif uh, uh, distribution and a predisposition, but. Uh, more studies have to be done. And of course, I also need to publish these papers. In Caucasians, it is membrane atherosis is not as pronounced as it is seen in, in uh, Indians and in African Americans. This is a membrane atherosis, fibrinoid necrosis, and atherosis uh, lipid laden macrophages. How does thrombosis of the decida basalis looks? This is, of course, you can see the normal transformed spiral artery and this is atherosis you can see that the entire lumen is occluded by a thrombus which is actually organized you can see that not only there is fibrinoid material here but also there is a lot of fibrosis it is an organized thrombus this is again totally occluded spiral artery you can see spiral artery thrombus here this is another view of spiral artery thrombus complete occlusion by this uh, fibrinoid material and a thrombus formation. This is again spiral artery fibrinoid necrosis. S the similar lesion can be seen exactly the same in decidia parietalis in the membranes. And you can see that the vessels of the uh, membranes are thrombosed completely. What is persistent endovascular trophoblast? How does it look? This is a normal transformed spiral artery. This is where you can see that there's a lot of trophoblast which is present in the in the spiral artery, this trophoblast should not be there. They should have completely merged with the endothelium. In fact, the endothelium is completely transformed by these, these trophoblasts. 
And these transforms by arteries show cytokeratin positivity. In this lesion, for example, most of the cytokeratin would be present only in this area. So this is a this is an endovascular trophoblast. This is another view of endovascular trophoblast. Here you can see how much of trophoblast is present in this in the in the lumen. With this view, you may not appreciate the amount. Here, look at this lesion. Look at this now. Nearly two thirds of the lumen is occluded by the trophoblast. So this is how important this lesion is. Persistent endovascular trophoblast. Then we come to some villous lesions. I'll show you some villous lesions like infarction, increased syncytial, trophy, syncytial knots, distal villous hypoplasia, villous agglutination, and in an infarction hematoma. These are all villous lesions of the of the placenta. Plastic villous infarction, for example, this is a normal uh, uh, villous tree at 26, <clears throat> 26 weeks gestation, and this is how a placental infarction looks. You can see there is complete dissolution of uh, dissolution of placental uh, parenchyma. Look at this. This lesion is a recent infarct uh, of a complete dissolution of basal plate. This is a basal plate, and this is a, a, a infarcted area of the placenta. Quite common, quite quite obvious for all of you. Uh, this is a, a normal villi, and this is how increased syncytial not look like. So you can see, you can see that the trophoblasts are predominantly uh, vascular, and there is a lot of trophoblasts all around. A uh, lot of trophoblasts which are uh, which are jutting out from the from the placenta. You can see, for example, uh, this is distal villus hypoplasia. Sometimes distal distal villus hypoplasia and placental uh, increase in syncytial knots occur together. Uh, so this is this villus hypoplasia and agglutination. What is how does agglutination look? You can see that all these lesions are agglutinated. All these bluish, which which have the bluish outline, uh, you can see that this this is how uh, agglutination looks in the term placenta. Uh, Two percent to ten percent of the placenta may show terminal. Uh, uh, Subchorionic uh, agglutination, but that should not be taken uh, as a as abnormal. You should always look at the at the gestational age and the outcome of the of the of the placenta of outcome of the delivery. If the if the baby is doing normal, then you should not call it as abnormal. It is not placental pathology is not to, nothing to do with what is pathological because what is pathological can also be seen in. Uh, in normal placentas. So gestational age and the outcome of the delivery. Outcome of the delivery is very important. And based on that, we have to uh, look, this is agglutinated villi. Now, one or two foci does not mean that one is abnormal. So if you have to have to take more sections, five sections are of such a big organ, uh, five sections may not be enough a lot of times. But yes, I know uh, everywhere we use three sections, three, one section from the coronic plate, two, uh, three sections from the coronic plate, one, one from the, uh, three from the, uh, uh, from the umbilical cord and the membranes which can be embedded together. So one by and large uses four to five sections, but four to five sections, believe me, are not enough to diagnose plastic pathology. Uh, so this is how placental villus agglutination looks. What is infarction hematoma? You can see a normal villus tree on the left-hand side, and you can see infarction as well as hemorrhage. This is infarction hematoma. A uh, lot of times we can also do a, a lipid stain, but lipid stain requires a special technique in the sense that placenta has to be a frozen section. So if you take a fresh placenta, which is frozen, or it is taken uh, if a cryostat cryosection is taken and when if we do a oil red o staining then we would find these lipid droplets in the atherosis this is a very classic lesion where you can we can actually demonstrate the the lipids we all know that processing washes away these lipids so we have to do a fresh frozen section of the placenta fresh section and a cryostat we do a lipid stain these atherotic lesions light up. So just to recapitulate, maternal vascular lesions of under 
under perfusion, which was the earlier nomenclature, now called maternal vascular malperfusion lesions, have vascular lesions and villous lesions. Vascular lesions are persistent muscularization, which can be uh, in the in the basal plate or the membranes. Then you can have atherosis, which is again in the basal plate and in the membranes, fibrinoid necrosis, thrombosis, persistent endovascular trophoblasts. These are vascular lesions and villous lesions are infarctions, increased incisional knots, agglutination of the villi, increased intervillous fibrinoid, distal villus hyperplasia. Uh, now, to compare with an atherosis of the heart, this is a coronary artery, as you can see, and this is a atherosclerotic, normal, uh, narrowed uh, uh, a vessel. This is exactly the same lesion which you find in the placenta. This is a normal artery, coronary artery, which is occluded 50% and a completely occluded coronary artery. And the, these are the lesions which I showed you in the placenta. Placenta atherosclerosis is very similar to the atherosclerosis of the heart. And that is why women who have MVM lesions in a pregnancy are at a high risk of coronary heart disease later on in life. So placenta is actually not only a window to a particular pregnancy, our pregnancy outcome, but also the future of the baby as well as the future of the mother. So placental examination has very, very significant uh, connotations. I would uh, request that it should not be taken lightly. Placenta is a very, very important organ for the fetus and for the mother. So this is how uh, atherosis or atherosclerosis of the heart, this is normal myocytes, and infarction looks and uh, infarction of the placenta is very similar. So uh, abruptio placenta, as I told you, is almost like a prototypical lesion for, for all MVM lesions. So all the MVM lesions which I showed you earlier might be present in an abruptio placenta if we are very diligent, if we sample it well. Here you can see a placenta. This, of course, is a classical case. You find a lot of hemorrhage in the basal plate. This is the close-up view of that hemorrhage. Another, another uh, you can see these uh, foci of hemorrhage at the basal plate. And this case had a lot of blood clots, not only blood clots, there was a lot of blood. And when we sampled, there was a fetal death. When we sample this, uh, so we, uh, I will show you the pathological lesions, all those MVM lesions which I showed earlier, and also the hemorrhagic lesions. So abruptio placenta is a lesion, lesion of vascular origin. In the initial event is an, is an ischemic lesion of the decidua resulting in decidual necrosis, vascular disruption and bleeding. Uh, there is hemorrhage, laceration and dissection along the decidual plane leading to placental separation. And there is physiological absence of physiological transformation of spinal arteries and reported almost 50% of of patients with abruptio placenta. This is uh, another picture to show how abruptio placenta looks. Histology, I, uh, I reiterate that every placenta, every amount, uh, even a minuscule amount of hemorrhage which happens should be sent for pathological examination in every suspected case of abruptio, clinical abruptio. Uh, if you sample those areas, you can find these, these hemorrhagic foci su, su, uh, and immediately su, uh, uh, above these hemorrhagic foci, you may find infarction and, and lesions of MVM. Uh, this is, you can clearly see the lines of zan, you can see uh, fibrin, you can see platelets. Uh, and here again, you can see, you can see the hemorrhage, you can see the platelets. These are the lines of zan, and you can see that uh, uh, just above the hemorrhage in the, the decida basalis, there is necrosis, there is a lot of infarction. So once again, it comes to sampling. You, uh, as, as a pathologist, we have to be very diligent and we have to sample these lesions, otherwise we may miss the diagnosis altogether. This, this, this is a beautiful illustration to show. Uh, uh, abruptio placenta and the lines of zan and the, you know, the fibrin. Most of the times, if we are again very uh, diligent, we, we will find these macrophages 
and macrophages usually appear by within 48 hours of bleeding. And uh, there is a beautiful paper by Dr. Benirshki, uh, who is known as the father of placental pathology. And I can share that paper if anybody is interested, where they have done animal exp exp uh, experiments to show when uh, after bleeding the macrophages appear in the placenta. And uh, whenever there is an abruptio placenta, uh, most of the times, if we are diligent, we will be able to demonstrate the presence of macrophages. And these uh, these are the macrophages. All of us know. All of us know how they look. Look at these macrophages. And if you do a stain, you can demonstrate the ferritin uh, pigment, beautiful pigment, iron stain for hemosiderin. So most of the times we can find that. So what is the pathophysiology, pathophysiology of MVM lesions? I'm going to close this, uh, this lecture with just two or three more slides. Uh, there are various theories. You can go through this paper recently published uh, uh, by Dr. Kingdom. He has done a lot of work on placenta. And they say that abnormal spiral artery remodeling could be one of the reasons that can explain the MVM lesions. The other hypothesis regression to explain these lesions. They say that because of these MVM lesions, because the spiral arteries have not transformed, the chorionic plate regresses, become small, and these are the histological features like distal villus hypoplasia, increased syncytial knots, accelerated villus maturation, all these lesions uh, can be seen uh, and the, so the, the theories are uh, uh, predominantly these two, chorionic regression and as I showed, abnormal spiral artery remodeling. Uh, just to recapitulate, spiral artery fibrinoid necrosis, spiral artery atherosis, persistent muscularization, infarction of the placenta, uh, this is the spiral artery thrombus, placental infarction, and a huge spiral artery thrombus. So very quickly, I've summarized, I have shown all the lesions of MVM. I have not discussed a lot of theory because if required, I can give as many papers as, as anybody wants on placental MVM lesions. But I thought for postgraduates especially, it's important to show how these lesions look like. So I will stop sharing the screen. And if you have any questions, please go ahead and ask. Thank you so much, sir, for that uh, wonderful, crisp and informative uh, session. Uh, I think it's so important uh, for us to uh, learn about these lesions because uh, since placental pathology is uh, during our training, we miss out on these learning uh, since it is not routinely sampled. Uh, so it was a wonderful session and uh, uh, while we wait for our audiences to chip in, I have a personal question for you, sir. So, Please go ahead. Uh, you, yeah, so you described the, the spectrum of MVM region, sir. I was just wondering if you can shed some light on which ones are more prominently seen in like COVID-19. Uh, COVID-19 has a totally different spectrum of lesions. COVID-19 uh, has uh, mainly chronic inflammatory lesions. You would find a lot of, so there are various papers, a lot of papers have come out and I myself have reviewed a lot of papers. Uh, I uh, submitted in IP, IAG, PM. I have reviewed papers in American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology, various other journals. A lot of people have uh, talked about uh, lesions, but they many of those lesions are not substantiated. They have uh, they have just picked up uh, you know, one or two cases. There are no no controls, so it's very important to have controls whenever we do whenever we want to publish a paper and say that these lesions are present. We must have controls. So these MVM lesions, uh, some of them can be seen, uh, but COVID nineteen, as I said, are predominantly chronic inflammatory lesions. You would find. Uh, massive perivillous fibrinoid deposition. You have chronic, chronic uh, intervillocytes. Uh, there is there is trophoblastic necrosis because this virus affects goes and sticks to these to the syncytial trophoblast. So you would imagine 
that, that these viruses are not going to the basal plate. They're not affecting the spiral arteries. They are coming from the maternal blood in the intervillous space. So if I share the screen again, uh, it is the, here, uh, let me go back. Uh, let me go to the sorter and I'll show you here. So this is the normal. So the virus comes into this interval space, which is the white space here. Where is the basal plate? You won't find MVM lesion so much. You might find a little bit uh, of infarction, but most of the lesions are because the virus gets stuck to these trophoblasts, this, this, this syncytial trophoblast, which is actually like a vascular plate. So uh, that uh, addition of those virus particles or virions or the virus particles to the syncytial trophoblast elicits an immunological reaction. So you would have a lot of chronic inflammatory lesions in the interval space, and you would find uh, there is trophoblastic necrosis, and one would find uh, uh, this uh, perivillous fibrinoid deposition. So these are the common lesions. One may have MVM lesions, but that is not because of the virus. It may be because there is a comorbidity present. There could be the patient may have uh, preeclampsia or may have some other comorbidity. It may, it may not be related to just the virus. MVM lesions in the COVID-19, uh, caused by COVID-19 virus, uh, has not been described in the literature. It is part, it could be comorbid. Uh, I would, I, you are not audible, doctors. Uh, Thank you so much, sir, for that wonderful explanation. Uh, Dr. Supriya, another thing, there is, there is actually, a, 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 there are many publications, but I would uh, like all of you to read papers by Dr. Schwartz. So you go to PubMed, write Schwartz, S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z, and then write COVID-19, uh, placental pathology. There are lots of publications, and he has done some stellar work on, on COVID-19, and, and that is the genuine work. Uh, it, it's, uh, and I, I would request everybody to actually be famili to familiarize uh, themselves with those papers, uh, that can uh, be a foundation for their, uh, I'm sure many of you have seen these cases, many of you have COVID-19 cases during the pandemic, but in order to publish the papers, we need to know what is right, we need to be able to differentiate between, uh, you know, what is right and what is wrong. Uh, that Those papers by, by Dr. Schwartz are really good. Right. Thank you so much, sir. So we have one question from Nandu. Uh, uh, she asked, why do we see marginal atrophy in grosser? Is it because of MVM? Atrophy? Yes, marginal atrophy. Uh, marginal atrophy, I I don't know uh, what doc, what is, uh, sorry, doctor's name, doctor? Nandu. Dr. Nandu, I, uh, Perhaps you are referring to uh, that placental regression or the chorionic regression syndrome, which I was I talked about, because uh, atrophy is not a term which is commonly used in the uh, atrophy of the placenta is not the term, uh, the nomenclature at least. Uh, you can go through the Amsterdam consensus or the Amsterdam uh, uh, classification, which has which was formulated in 2016. Subsequent to that, there are a lot of publications uh, on Amsterdam. Dr. Redline himself has written, Dr. Kong has published papers. So it's important to have whenever we do, for example, I want to sh tell you about tumors. All of us like tumors. We all want to do tumors, but can we call a tumor by our own name? We cannot. So there is a nomenclature, there's a WHO nomenclature. Uh, we follow that nomenclature to classify the tumors. The same thing is with placenta. So I think what Dr. Nandu is referring to is perhaps the, the chorionic regression syndrome where many 
placentas, the lobes get, uh, you know, atrophic. Perhaps some of them have MVM lesions, but they could also have, I have, uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, last month, there was a, uh, there was a conference in Malaysia on maternal fetal medicine. They had invited me to give a talk on placental lesions in fetal growth restriction. And I have cases, uh, my own cases, where fetal growth restriction placentas actually look atrophic. Oh, yeah, and that's not because of MVM lesions. It, those, le those were because of chronic inflammatory lesions of the placenta. Placenta becomes very small. Some of them may have MVM lesions. So uh, atrophy uh, is perhaps not the right term. Um, it's not, uh, but I think it's chronic, chronic regression, uh, which sometimes, or maybe what Dr. Is, uh, Nandu is referring to is placental, uh, like the papyraceous placenta, which, which is like a paper. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, I hope I can answer the question because atrophy is not uh, ringing any bell, at least to me. Thank you, sir. We have another question from Dr. Anuradha Rao from Calicut. She wants to know, is placental villus uh, uh, edema also a part of fetal response to MVM? No. Uh, fetal edema, the villus edema is uh, when there is usually acidosis. Uh, so the pH can reflect if we... Uh, Placental examination, like any other pathological examination, should be done with the history and the gestational age and the fetal outcome. So when you have all those information, you should look at the pH of the um, umbilical cord. What is the cord blood pH? So usually if there is acidemia, you would find that there is uh, uh, villus edema. Villus edema can also be seen in hydrops fetalis, which could be a, there's a, all sorts of uh, hydrops fetalis in, uh, uh, includes uh, uh, a wide spectrum of disorders uh, like uh, congenital heart diseases, the uh, storage disorders. So all those, uh, uh, so feet, uh, um, uh, villus edema is not part of MVM lesions. Uh, Accelerated villus maturation, which is not villus edema, is can be included in the MVM lesions, and there is uh, there are lesions of disorders of villus maturation. Some of them, like uh, persistent, uh, some of those ma maturation disorders, uh, can uh, mimic villus edema. Uh, they are also not part of MVM lesions. So, to answer your question. Villus edema uh, is not part of the MVM lesions, but you may have villus edema along with MVM lesions. But please do not uh, classify villus edema under uh, MVM lesions because as of now, all the literature, all the studies, all the research does not suggest that villus edema is due to MVM lesions. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, that will be it from uh, for questions from audience. Um, so we've come to end of the session. Uh, we are very grateful to you, sir, for sharing your knowledge with us. We wish the session could go on a little bit more longer. Uh, such wonderful pictures, so much to learn from you. Uh, thank you so much for taking our time and uh, sharing your slides with us. Yeah, I, I'm sorry I had to rush through because I, uh, I've i come, I'm actually in the same time zone. I have come to India on an emergency basis. Uh, Dr. Aditya knows uh, uh, I, I am actually right now in Ahmedabad uh, and I didn't want to uh, sort of backtrack. I have given a word and I wanted to stick to the word. Uh, and I thought it's important that I just show all the pictures, show all the lesions. Uh, and I hope I have done some justice. I hope I have uh, not wasted the time of the audience. Absolutely not, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We really Thank you, sir. Dr. Aditya, we really appreciate you joining us and uh, teaching us uh, in the midst of uh, family uh, health <laughs> emergency also. 
uh, we really appreciate you sticking to it and we were uh, grateful enough for the, uh, having the opportunity to learn from you and maybe we will have more sessions like this in future too thank you sir thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much sir thank you thank you everybody Dr. Sophie, any closing announcements? Uh, so a quick reminder for our uh, audience. Uh, the registration for APCON 2022 is uh, ending on 30th September. Uh, it is being held by Karnataka chapter this year uh, uh, from 30th November to 4th of December. So I request all of you to do your registration and actively participate because it's going to be bigger and better than ever. Uh, with that, I think we'll be closing the session, sir. Thank you all.